Hi, I'm the Casual Spaceman and once again welcome to my channel. First of all, I want to say a big thank you to everybody that subscribed to my channel. This channel yesterday achieved the first small milestone of 100 subscribers. So it's all down to you people. YouTubers wouldn't have their channels if it wasn't for people like you. So you make it what it is. So I really appreciate you subscribing to my channel and I just hope you continue to keep watching. So anyway, on with today's subject. And today's subject is about moon craters and it actually comes from a channel called Space Busters. And I thought, well, they've got to be right up my street. But the actual inspiration comes from Simon Dan's recent video coming from the same channel. So I just want to say thank you, Simon Dan. I hope you don't mind me poking my nose into this channel as well. So what have Space Busters got to say about the moon? Let's take a look. NASA fanboy questions, eh? Good start. For question number two, we are going to stick with our old friend, the moon. NASA tells us that we always see the same side or face of the moon because it is locked into synchronous rotation with the Earth. Just another one of those wonderful coincidences. Like the Correct so far. Can't argue with that. Like the moon and the sun having exactly the same angular size as each other so the eclipses can happen. Correct again. Doing very well so far. They also tell us that the moon is covered with impact craters from gazillions of years of bombardment. Uh, I'm not sure that gazillions is a number, but I'm only teasing you. Carry on. All sorts of cosmic junk. As our own eyes show us, meteors, meteorites, shooting stars and other celestial events in the night sky come from all different angles. For an impact crater to be perfectly round, the impact object has to hit perpendicular to the surface. Well, actually, no, it doesn't, but I'll explain all that later. Carry on. If it doesn't, then the crater is elongated. This can be adequately demonstrated by dropping a pebble onto sand. Well, actually, no, that's not an accurate demonstration because a pebble dropping into sand isn't traveling at several thousand miles per hour like a meteorite does which produces a massive amount of kinetic energy. But I'll explain all that in a moment. Let it drop and it will make a circle. Throw it at an angle and it will make an elongated mark. Strangely enough, all the craters on the moon are circles. Therefore, we have to assume that all of the impacts came from a 90 degree angle, perpendicular to the surface. This is possible. However, highly improbable. Well, first of all, let's address this issue that all the impact craters on the moon are circular. At first appearance, when you look through a telescope, quite often you would actually say that you were right. But just a little bit of research will actually reveal that's not quite true. I mean, look at these. Or this one. Or this one. In fact, it took me less than five minutes just to find those images of those irregular shaped craters. So. I failed to see why you couldn't do that. As for your analogy of the pebble being dropped into the sand and creating a round circular crater, well that's as maybe, but as I mentioned earlier on, a pebble is not travelling at many thousands of miles per hour like a meteorite can. And a meteorite travelling at that kind of speed is creating a massive amount of kinetic energy, just as I mentioned earlier. So first of all, what is kinetic energy? I noticed how much you'd like to use Wikipedia in your videos, so I thought I'd do the same. So according to Wikipedia, the kinetic energy of an object is the energy that it possesses due to its motion. It is defined as the work needed to accelerate a body of a given mass from, it, from rest to its stated velocity. Having gained this energy during its acceleration, the body maintains this kinetic energy unless its speed changes. The same amount of work is done by the body when decelerating from its current speed to a state of rest. So when a mass, in this case the meteorite, hits another mass, which is much bigger than itself, in this case the moon, the mass that has the kinetic energy, the meteorite, has decelerated almost immediately. So that energy must go somewhere, right? And the only way that energy can be released is in the result of an explosion. And as, you, as we know, in most cases, an explosion and its crater 
is almost always circular in shape. Another good way of looking at this is from this image. Now this photo is taken from World War II of some bomb craters I believe in Japan. As you can see the bomb craters are very circular in shape. Now what's happened is that when the bomb is dropped it does have some velocity and therefore it has some kinetic energy. But the kinetic energy from the bomb dropping both horizontal and vertical is actually much less than the energy of the resultant explosion when the bomb detonates. Therefore we get a round circular crater. Well there we have it. I hope that explains things fairly well. As we can see it doesn't really matter what direction the meteorites hitting the moon are coming from. It can still produce very circular craters. But just out of common courtesy let's see the rest of the video. But what about all the craters that are constantly facing Earth? Where the hell did those meteorites come from? Did they go around the Earth before they reached the moon? Did they go through the Earth by some magical means? Is there some guy somewhere on Earth taking pot shots at the moon with a big gun? I once heard someone suggest that the craters were formed by escaping gas from the moon's core. Oh, pardon? I mean, really, NASA? How can you explain this one? Well, I'm not NASA, but I just did. Does that count? For one, the chances of every meteorite hitting the moon perfectly perpendicular is about as likely as Brexit happening or Bill Gates taking one of his own vaccines. <sighs> well, that's another video, but that's not for me. And how did the perfectly circular impact craters always facing the Earth get there? I've just explained that. I cannot wait to hear you wriggle out of this one. Just did. Space Busters, the channel that makes you think for yourselves. Oh, I like that one. The channel that makes you think for yourself. What it means is think like us or you're wrong. I suggest you do your own research by asking the experts and looking at reliable sources and then drawing your own conclusions. But I think that's enough for today. Thank you very much for watching. And if you like this video, please like below. And if you'd like to subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon and then you'll be notified when I upload more videos. So that just leaves me one more thing to say. Space is real, the moon landings happened and science is truth. Thank you for watching.